Hello everyone and welcome to our uh, webinar offered by the European School Education Platform. Today um, we will discuss about a very interesting topic um, on uh, involving parents in uh, inclusive education, in uh, education on, um, on special education. And uh, our, we have our expert here, uh, Inge van de Pute. Um, her expertise uh, lies in supporting teachers and special needs uh, coordinators. And uh, her, uh, her studies and her PhD, her ongoing PhD, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is also um, is specialized on this field. So um, before I give the floor to her, I would like to remind you of some things. As I told you, this uh, session is being recorded. And um, we will uh, have some uh, evaluation forms, uh, which we will share with you by the end uh, of the course um, of this webinar. I'm sorry. Furthermore, um, I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? OK, can you see I'm in the slide with the online course? Can you see it? Yes, we see it, Maria Elena. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Effie, very much. Mm -hmm. So I would like to remind you that uh, there is also an online course that uh, was uh, launched uh, a week ago concerning this topic. And uh, you can uh, find it and register on the link that we have provided you. You can uh, click on the link right now if you want, and you can explore the course later. Uh, this course is uh, relevant to educators and everyone who's interested uh, in enhancing their understanding and skills in creating inclusive classrooms through effective uh, parent-teacher uh, partnerships. So um, I can now give the floor to Inge if uh, my colleague Effie doesn't have something else to... Okay, great to add. So Inge, the floor is yours and thank you very much again for being here with us. Okay, thank you. Um, it's nice to see how international um, the audience is. Eh? Uh, first of all, I'm uh, Inge van der Putte. Um, I uh, work at the University of Ghent. Uh, English is not my first language, it's my third language, so it, it needs some warming up. Yeah, um, so but it will be fine. Um, I work at the University of Ghent, where I teach um, the lessons diversity and inclusion. Um, there, I also do research about um, children with disabilities. So my perspective is a lot about uh, children or parents of children with uh, a disability or with special needs. Eh? And in our disability studies group, we have a lot of um, attention we give to the voice of uh, children and parents. We find it very important because a lot of the times we uh, our experience is that it, it are the missing voices. So it's important to be very active in how can we collaborate with uh, parents. Um, I also work at the um, parents movement and that's Parents for Inclusion. It's a um, movement for parents to become stronger, to know their rights about inclusive uh, life and in inclusive education, and also to um, yeah, have some peer support between parents um, to take up their role as a parent of uh, choosing uh, an inclusive tra trajectory. In Belgium, um, yeah, we, we had uh, the ratification of the U UN Convention uh, for people with a disability. Yeah? So um, we need to develop a more inclusive uh, system, a more inclusive education system. Uh, but that is not a reality. Eh? In the reality, we see that uh, choosing for inclusion is uh, not a norm. Eh? Um, we we still have around Europe, we have a, a high percentage of uh, children who go to special schools. Uh, so 
it is something we need to do very active. We need to do it very um, with a lot of attention. And one of the key factors is working with parents, collaborating with parents, uh, because one of the things is that we can see that the expertise around inclusive education, around inclusion, um, a, a good facilitator there are parents. Eh? They show us uh, the way how uh, we can make um, an inclusive trajectory for their son or daughter. Um, so you know a little bit more about uh, me, eh, the person that is presenting um, this. Um, yeah, um, I, I first want to have a reflection question. Um, when you think of collaboration with parents, what word comes in mind? And maybe you can just reflect on it or you can use the chat. Uh, I will give uh, one, two minutes that you can answer this question. Uh, so what word comes in mind when you think about collaboration with parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for being um, very active in the chat. I can see some um, words that pop up. Eh? Collaboration. Um, it also has to do with teamwork. Um, Sometimes it's very uh, difficult. Eh? It's a challenge, um, different opinions. How do you work eh? with those different uh, opinions, uh, respect? Eh? So um, that are very, um, it says something about the collaboration that it's not that easy. Eh? And uh, what I wanted to do in this um, uh, one hour course is that I will bring in the perspective of parents and uh, because of we did a lot of research that parents give us some golden keys what is very important in setting up in that collaboration um, but therefore i will uh, start with um, um, a testimony of a parent eh? And um, it's um, Ilse, the parent of Clara. And um, um, I think last year I met her and she um, explains, um, she told about uh, inclusive uh, tra trajectory of her uh, daughter. Eh? And um, she started and she said, my daughter is like a barracuda. Eh? When she wants something, she really goes for it and doesn't let go. And she gives the example that in the um, uh, period of the Corona epidemic, there were a, a lot of rules. And for example, um, in Belgium in that time, um, in April 2020, eh, we couldn't uh, go out or if we went out we had uh, it was limited with three four people and clara um uh, it was her birthday and she became uh, 16 yeah it's a very important age eh? and um at that time she she said but i wanted to do a, a birthday party and she heard on the news that in the in the church you could meet with more people so clara said not a problem i will give my birthday party in the church eh? then i can have more people you can see something about how uh, creative clara is in her way of uh, thinking around the world eh? Clara grows up in a family where they are 
really dressed very fine. Um, you know, their trousers and their uh, sweater, it's in the same color. There is a lot of attention. Um, and Clara went to a school with uh, in, in the city, in Antwerp, with a big diversity. And of course, if you have a big diversity, you also have more uh, dressing styles, eh, what, what people wear. And on one day, Claire, Clara came home and she said, I wanted to wear uh, a leather jacket. And the mother thought, oh my God, a leather jacket. Eh? That's not what I had in mind. But um, eh, she first had a lot of resistance. But after a while, she said, this is also inclusion. Eh? Um, inclusion is about developing your um, identity. It's also adapting in the environment that you live in. Eh? And I found it uh, in that testimony, I found a lot of um, important uh, things that tell us something about inclusion, but it also tells us something about the important role parents have to play there. They can teach us. Eh? Um, although I know that the collaboration um, is at some moments not that um, easy, uh, but I think we as professionals can learn a lot of uh, parents. And um, uh, I just want to mention some, some points. Eh? And um, if we look at it, we can see that inclusion is about uh, values. Eh? Um, it's not about a place, um, but it's about values. It's about belonging. Eh? It's about how you stand in life. Clara wants a leather jacket because she wants to connect with her peers. Eh? Um, and a lot of the times we have professionals, we think about maths and language and uh, all those subjects. But if we talk about uh, inclusion with parents, we can see that they bring in more the values about belonging and connection and having a place in a school. And if you are not there, you are missed. Uh, so I think we can learn a lot uh, when we talk with parents. We can learn a lot about what inclusion is. Eh? Um, another thing is that um, inclusion is also a pedagogical choice of parents. It's a way how they look to the world. It's a way how they want to support, uh, to educate their child. Eh? Um, and for it, we live in a neoliberal uh, society. Eh? You need to be an independent person. Um, and there we can see that parents make sometimes different um, choices, choices that go in uh, to that neoliberal idea. Eh? For example, um, the, the uh, uh, Ilse, the parent of Clara, she said, um, I found it so important that she can uh, ask support to her peers, that she can ask support to the teachers. Eh? So it's not about being independently, but it's about I'm living in this world and what is the support? What are the resources, resources that are there and that I can use? Eh? Um, can I use my smartphone? Can I ask questions and, and so on? So we can learn from parents about what is inclusion about values, but we also learn from parents that inclusion is about a pedagogical choice, a way of how you want to develop your child. Another thing we learn uh, also in the testimony, eh, we can learn that the representation of their child, eh? um, they do it in a way that it's very recognizable. Um, for example, uh, Ilse is not telling that Clara has autism, but she's telling my child is a barracuda. Eh? She uses a metaphor um, in a way that we can understand that there are some thinking ways of, of Clara that is very rigid is very rigid eh? and and that it would be that she takes things very uh, uh, 
literally, eh? uh, for example, with the corona epidemic and the party in the church. Eh? Um, but she brings also a, a view of Clara that is very recognizable. Eh? In a way, we can see that it's about a girl that is becoming 16 and she wants to have a party. I, th that's, that's not about a child with autism, but it's about a girl from that age that wants to do the same things as her um, peers. Eh? So we can learn a lot about how uh, parents represent um, their child. We can learn about it. How do they do that? Because we can use that in our connection with other professionals. Eh? For example, uh, the, the teacher of the next year, um, I can give a representation that is very rich. Eh? Um, another thing is that um, it's also about working together. In the story of uh, Ilse, she connects a lot with uh, different people. She connects with uh, the teacher. She connects with the peers. She connects with the supporter. Eh? And what we see is that uh, parents have a network or they can think in a network. They can think, they already experience that uh, inclusion. You don't do it alone. You need a lot of um, other people to make it work. And um, that we can also learn from parents. Eh? So um, I think it's important to see that in our collaboration with parents, that although we are the professional, that we can learn a lot of parents uh, about um, how they experience inclusion and how they make inclusion work. So um, I just want to ask you the question again. You can reflect on it or you can put it in the chat. Do you have a representation in mind of how a par parent present their child in a very rich way? And why do I give this question? Uh, it has to do with if we are talking about diversity, we have a lot of categorization. Eh? Um, we talk about children with a, a different background of with a diverse background or who are multilingual or who have special needs. And then we sum up the different labels eh? and um, it's important to have a more recognizable uh, idea view um, because in that recognizable uh, representation there you already can see how you can uh, support a person and who is that person if you say clara has autism i don't know what that means in that context but with the little example i just gave you know that you have to be very careful in the way you talk about things because Clara will be take it very uh, literally. Eh? Um, so that is also one of the things we can learn from parents what inclusion is, uh, but we can learn a lot about how they take up that representation of their child. Eh? Okay. So um, I already took a lot of words, inclusive education, eh? and um, it's already very clear that it's not a place. It's not about uh, children with uh, who are very diverse, um, who go to a regular school. Eh? It's much more. It has to do with values and it has to do with the things um, I wrote down here. For example, eh? It has to do with uh, that regular schools uh, will adapt their in infrastructure, their organization, the methods they use, the teaching material, all, the, all those things they adapt. For example, for Clara, um, she, didn't, she didn't do a classical examination, but they look at the um, 
evolution of Clara uh, throughout the year. They uh, had very clear goals and they looked what are uh, what is the evolution of Clara. But she didn't do any examination because we know that it's very difficult for uh, Clara, that it's, uh, uh, it would be a very high uh, barrier for her. Eh? Um, so that is important to see uh, what they did because she didn't participate on the examination. Uh, at the end of the um, uh, examination, you know, um, one of the things is um, uh, one of the things is that uh, Clara made soup, and together after the end of the examination, they drank uh, their bowl of soup, uh, and it was a way that there was belonging because the parents said, uh, "What I." Uh, uh, what I experience at home, because she's not participating in the examination, that she's also isolated. Eh? So again, uh, parents can uh, think about, can can uh, can give their experience, but they also can think about what is uh, needed. Eh? Um, thank you, Yasna, for your uh, reply. Eh? Um, is on the ground floor, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, another thing is um, inclusive education. It's not only about adapting, but it's also a springboard for inclusive society. Uh, what we see is that the students who grow up with Clara, they can uh, collaborate and they know that support is something very natural. Eh? Um, uh, for example, Clara, at the beginning of the year, she gave some explanation about her needs and the way she likes to have support. Um, and it was a very intensive moment because uh, after the presentation of Clara, there was a dialogue with the peers. They were telling, but I also need some support or I also have some difficulty with languages or with reading. And you could see that there... Uh, became a very positive climate eh? because uh, this is what inclusive education is doing, doing that we get inclusive society. Another thing is that it's important that there is support, support for teachers um, and for principals. I, I think what is very important that there, uh, that we give teachers space to collaborate and that we give teachers space to reflect on their practice. Uh, so they know what is meant with the quote that Yasna is telling eh, that the needs are on the floor because it's uh, a girl in a, a, or it's a student in a wheelchair. Eh? What does it mean? What do I need to do differently in my organization um, to make sure that there are no obstacles anymore? Eh? So I think it's very important if we think about in terms of need uh, support for teachers that we think in terms of time for collaboration, time for reflecting on your practice and to be the architect again of your classroom. And in being an architect of your classroom, it's also important that you make your <clears throat> education so um, very accessible, accessible for all the students who are in your classroom. And we know that principle of universal design for learning. And if it's if we still have any barriers there, then it's important that we have reasonable accommodations eh, that we can um, look at it from how can we have solutions that the barriers are going down. Eh? So inclusive education is not um, uh, one definition, but it's a process. And in that process, um, the collaboration with parents is very important to think about how can we adapt, how can we make sure that we have a springboard for an inclusive society, that there are, uh, that we can support each other in that searching process, and that we make uh, the adaptations that are there are there for all the children. Eh? 
I have another quote of a parent, and it's uh, Dana. It's a parent of Wart, and she said, "In the collaboration, I experience that there, in the meeting, everyone is there, but it's still a puzzle where everybody takes a piece of it. Eh? And in my feeling, they don't get the whole puzzle. Eh? We miss something in that overview, in that." Um, uh, taking that uh, shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what we found is um, that parents are a very important figure. Eh? They are the first and the most important figure um, in the lives of children. And it's very important to be aware that we as professionals, uh, we are passing by, we come, one moment a year, maybe a little bit longer, but the parents are the one um, that have the first and the last um, uh, taking up the responsibility for their child. Um, and in the uh, collaboration, it's important that we give uh, that um, uh, that we give that responsibility for parents. Eh? Another thing is that uh, parents have important perspective and they have local knowledge. Eh? We, we call it local knowledge because it's knowledge they created in working with their child. Eh? Um, we work, uh, for example, eh, I'm now working with a girl that is 12 years old. I need those parents to have an idea of what do you know that that works? Uh, what is your experience? What is the interest and, and so on? Um, so then that is the local knowledge, the expertise I need as a professional. And for example, if I refer again to Clara, Clara, um, she has uh, autism. Eh? But one of the things is that she doesn't have a problem if there is change in um, her teacher is sick and there is another teacher. That's not a problem for Clara. If there is another supporter, that's not a problem for Clara. But when it's now in, in Antwerp, we have now around 20 degrees. Eh? It's uh, just OK to have a, a light. Uh, you have a T-shirt. Eh? Um, then you need to uh, make sure that um, Clara that she take off her sweater. Eh? That's something very difficult for her. When is the moment when you take off that sweater? Eh? That is the way we can see that she um, uh, is, is that she stays in that structure of a trouser, a, a sweater, and I put it on. No, no. When it is twenty degrees, Clara, we don't do it anymore. And eh? then she's not flexible anymore. Eh? Um, so it's important that we take up that knowledge of parents. They know those things. When Clara is in the spring a little bit grumpy, we now think, oh, it's too hot, hot, and she uh, is still wearing her sweater. Uh, it's, uh, it is that local knowledge that we need from parents. Uh? Parents are also very important in the decision-making process. Uh? Um, what we see is that we inform parents, eh? but um, it's important to take up partnership, to have teamwork, and that they are part of that decision-making process. And one of the things that we found in our research eh, um, is that it's very important that we give an idea of uh, how the classroom is working, how the classroom is organized, how is their child participating? Actually, parents don't know that. And if they don't know that, they cannot think with us or they give uh, advice or ideas that are not um, referable to a classroom. A classroom is still working with a group. Yeah? So, um, what we found in our research is that we need to take into account that there is a very important role for us that we give a view of 
what is happening in that classroom? How is your child participating? And not in a way of it's not working or there are a lot of obstacles, but just showing how a classroom and a group is working. Eh? And we can do that with pictures. We can make a little uh, video if they found uh, that's okay with privacy letter uh, uh, rules and everything but there are a lot of ways we can show um, and we can make it very visible how their child is participating um, then they can take up a shared responsibility then they can take up uh, thinking about the decisions they have to, uh, to make and, and so on. Eh? Um, <clears throat> so another um, testimony of a parent or a quote of a parent is, I wear all those different hats. Eh? I'm a psychologist, I'm an expert, I'm a therapist. And yes, I am also a parent. And um, what I wanted to show is a video, a, a little fragment, a, a little clip of the video we made. Um, it's a video inclusive. It's from uh, Ellen Vermeulen. And uh, we made it um, in an, um, a research project where we um, filmed from the perspective of children. And we uh, will see a little bit of Nathan. And Nathan is um, uh, a boy who is in secondary school. And Nathan has his own goals. He's working on his own trajectory. And uh, he is telling us some things and we will listen to it. Inge, can you hear me? Excuse me? Can you hear me? Yeah, Maria I can Elena. hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah. I but will... I don't see the video. Yes, I will share my screen. I will stop sharing the presentation. We will okay. I will share my screen and we will show the video. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Ik <laughs> Ik heb een beetje een klein is. Dat is anders dan. En dat is een beetje Ja. 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 Een fieberthermometer. Wat is een fieberthermometer? Kort. Een kort thermometer. Ja, een kort thermometer, inderdaad. Ander. Probeer het? Versuch maar. Ik ga vragen en neem 
een uh, bikini, een badehose, een uh, landkaart, een fotoapparaat. Ik ben heel erg warm. Ik zie niet gewoon wat ik uh, wat ik wil. Misschien in mijn beste tijd. Ja, misschien. So what we can see is that, uh, or what we can hear, uh, is about Nathan, who is telling um, what the role of his parent is. Eh? In the beginning of the year, giving some explanation about the needs of, of Nathan. Eh? Um, that is not so easy. Eh? Um, it, it, it puts parents in a role um, that is very um, vulnerable also uh, because they have to talk about their child. How do you do that with um, yeah, a classroom of uh, pupils? <laughs> uh, they are 16, 17 years old. Um, that's not that easy. Eh? Um, so that is what um, Mohammed is telling from all the different hats he's wearing. Um, on the other hand, we could also see at the end of the video clip, uh, Nata is telling what his dreams are. Eh? And maybe he wants to go to university. And uh, I know when the teachers um, heard his his desire there they said it's not possible it's not the right perspective it's not okay but when we talked with the parents eh, they said there are two things one of the things is that um he said um i don't have any dream eh? and first of all we think as a professional we need to work with uh nathan you need to have dreams and and so on eh? um but the, the um parents told us the brother of nathan when he saw the movie he said actually nathan is a very chill person he can be in this moment he's very mindfulness he's not worrying about the future eh? um so when we got that perspective of the family that how Nathan looks to the world, we could see that is also something we can take in account. And it changes our idea of the alarm bells who went on from, oh, Nathan doesn't have a perspective. And it, the perspective he has is not the right perspective. Eh? Uh, it's not possible to go to the university. So I think I also read it in the chat from um, we, we see a lot that that we say that parents have a, a wrong uh, perspective. Eh? But I think it's important that in our collaboration, uh, we go in communication very deeply to know what what do they mean and what is their idea of um, living eh? and for example the parents had already had contact with higher education uh, to look at what are the possibility that what we want is that Nathan could learn that he has a long life to learn eh? I think um, it's important to know that is the perspective and one of the things is we need to give time to parents eh? Uh, from our perspective of, of a professional, I'm the teacher of that grade and I need to give that advice. But most of all, we see that it takes time, that it takes time to develop um, a pathway that is not a, a standard pathway. Eh? So I think in working with parents that we, we need to give parents time. And sometimes that's difficult when you have a transition to another school uh, because there needs to be some testing. So I also understand that there is some tension in it, but I think there is still some space that we 
can give parents time to develop a pathway, an idea of what is possible. And for example, I can say Nathan is already, um, um, he's still learning in a higher education because he has a passion for music. Eh? Um, and he's also working in a library where he uh, knows everything from Bach uh, to Mozart. Eh? Um, so he um, he's a very valuable um, employer there. Eh? Um, so I think it's important that in our collaboration, we have attention for those different hats parents are wearing eh? and um, sometimes they go in resistance or they don't don't collaborate because of there is um, some tension between between those different roles or different heads they have to put on eh? um, So I just want to know what is your strategy of bringing in the expertise of parents into your classroom practice so that you can better address the needs of the children. You can share it again in the chat or you can think about it. What are strategies that helps that parents can bring in their expertise, their local knowledge? How can they do that? Invite them to school, a very important one. Eh? Um, I will go to the next slide and um, we um, put together the strategies that uh, teachers uh, that the teachers are doing and that parents says that is very helpful to get a partnership where there is um, awareness of the very uh, different, uh, there is awareness of our parent role. We are not the professional. Eh? So it's important uh, to invite them to school. Eh? One of the things is a strategy to have involvement of parents is engaging actively in connection. And I think uh, also open days for parents are very important. Again, giving an idea of how a classroom is organized. Eh? Um, we did some research with parents who are not familiar with the uh, Flemish educational system. And the experience of schools was that there was a lot of uh, resistance of parents. They didn't want to collaborate uh, and so on. And one of the things is um, that actually they, they didn't have a clue of how a classroom was organized, how their child was participating. So actively in involving uh, parents, connecting with parents is uh, very uh, important. Eh? Yeah, times that parents can collaborate in a school and then they can share their experience, eh? for example. Uh, another thing parents also say is uh, providing a bridge figure. Eh? They say it's a figure, it's a person that can be the bridge between school and um, the, the home context, eh? uh, but also a person that when we are working with a lot of people that they can um, uh, make sure that that groups come together, that there is an agenda when there is a meeting and so on, but always somebody who checks with the parents um, are you aware of what is happening? What are your points that you want to discuss? What are the points from the school we want to discuss and so on? So I know this takes a lot of energy, but if we want to have collaboration with parents, it will be very important to make sure. Eh? Um, maintain an open communication. Eh? We had a lot of um, um, we already did a lot of research with parents and one of the things we uh, they give us, they, they say we notice when there is um, 
when there are obstacles or where there are things not spoken, they know it. So making sure that you have an open communication and in an open communication, you all also say that is working well and that are the obstacles. Eh? Recognizing the parents' expertise, eh? um, making sure that um, we know their local knowledge that we can collect that, that we can use that. Eh? So um, being very actively working on that involvement. Secondly, they say it has to do about this child in this school. Eh? It has to become very personal. And therefore, parents say, listen to the anecdotes, the little stories from the home context. Eh? Um, for example, for Clara, if I think about it, um, she can go in a stress level and get very angry. But the mother is very good in using uh, humor, you know, and just doing that, it makes sure that um, uh, Clara is calming down. So knowing what is that mother doing can help us. Uh, the little anecdotes are helpful. Um, another thing is that parents say setting up an interaction. Eh? And I say I see that somebody is telling making lessons both with students and parents. Eh? It could be that you do something together, that there is an interaction. Um, if I work um, around uh, for Nathan, for example, uh, we have to work around Mozart. What are the things you already could do at home to listen to Mozart and so on? And, and what was his uh, what was his telling? What was his idea and so on? Eh? Um, be loyal to their choice of inclusive education. Eh? Um, it's maybe a very hard one, but it's important. If we look at inclusive education is a way of life, is a pedagogical choice. We need to take into account and to um, respect that choice also. The needs are central and not a label. Eh? I think I already said it. It has to do with taking, making sure that you have a very rich uh, representation of who is this child. Eh? Listen to the parents very uh, carefully eh? and being open to new things. Sometimes we need to search for a solution. A solution is not there on one day. We need to search for it. So being open to new things, exploring. Eh? For example, the teacher of Clara, she said, I never done it. All my students did an examination. So it was for her very difficult to take that step to see how can I also make sure that there is that I can monitor the evaluation of Clara, but it doesn't need to be in an examination. So being open to new things, taking that shared responsibility. Eh? What is your responsibility as a teacher or a supporter? Take up that shared responsibility. Eh? Um, and last of it, parents say the strategy of co-creation. And in that strategy, they say, listen actively to each other. And sometimes we need to brainstorm to make um, new ideas, to develop new ideas. Um, another thing is what parents also say, uh, give support rather than advice. Um, a lot of the times, uh, Parents also say, give us time, give us perspective, give us uh, maybe connection with other parents um, so that you can see uh, what is needed. Yeah? And I just want to give an example of my own um, trajectory of one of my sons. Yeah? The, he has uh, dyslexia. Yeah? Um, and one of the things is um, I found it so important that he could read because I think it's a whole um, environment, a whole world that is now locked up because he can't read. But in uh, interaction with other supporters and other uh, parents, I can see that there are a lot of resources that in this world 
maybe it's not that necessary or there are a lot of resources and it will change my idea in what is needed to uh, develop or what is needed to support him. And shared successes, eh? inclusion can also can only work if we also share successes and maybe it are very little steps, but uh, what is working, can we share that? Can we uh, explore that? Why is it working? And one of the things is keep in mind that there are power relationships. Eh? Um, it, it's um, we want to have an equal relationship with parents, but parents are in their very vulnerable role. It's about their goals, their child. So we need, need to take into account that there is a difference in a power relationship. And for example, parents say, if I come to a meeting, then... Um, parents, uh, then there are a lot of professionals. And the first thing they ask is, can you tell how it's working uh, at home? Or can you take the first uh, worst? Eh? Or, or can you uh, give your perspective? Sometimes it feels not secure for parents because th that has to do with uh, the difference in power relationship. Eh? It's only it's it's almost an impossible task to talk a lot and to take you into strategies that can work in collaboration with parents in one hour. So I hope that I inspired you, and um, that uh, now I will leave some time to have some time to have some questions. Thank you very much, Inge. It was uh, indeed a very uh, interesting. Uh, webinar. So I saw a comment earlier, like a few comments, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. I saw a comment firstly from um, Natalia. Uh, she said that parents, parents are undoubtedly, sorry, important in the lives of their children. That's true in the decision making process. However, uh, quite often their perspective is not right. It is affected by their own expectations. What do we do if uh, they are not willing to modify their perspective despite uh, the attempt, uh, the attempts of uh, teachers yeah. to give them an idea of what is going on in the class? Yeah, I think uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I think it was Natalia. It was uh, Natalia. Yeah, and to thank uh, to thank you um, that it um, uh, that you already do a lot of um, yeah that that you that you want uh, to go to collaborate with parents. Eh? Uh, what I think is important. What I said is it has to to do also with time eh? because one of the things is what we say is. Uh, it is influenced by their own background and their own values and their own perspective. But that is normal. That is with each of us eh, that way. So I think it's important that we give time to parents eh, and that we listen very carefully in what is um, the value that they that they think is very important. Eh? For example, for my son, um, I think it's very important that um, he still has a very good self-image. You know, it's not because of the the reading is very hard that uh, it also has to affect his self-image. So sometimes with parents, if you can uh, discuss what are your uh, what are the things you are worried about if you can uh, explore that then sometimes you see it's not about the discussing point of his reading for example but it's about the discussing point of of the the barriers that that uh, parents have the the things there are uh, uh, just the way they are very uh, vulnerable about it. Uh, so I think we need to make time. We have to listen very carefully. And maybe um, it's maybe not the right answer, but not to think in terms they have a wrong perspective, but they have a different perspective. And maybe that also can make more connection between the, 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 the two diverse perspectives.
Thank you very much, Inge. Uh, I would like also to highlight another comment I saw from DASA that uh, um, the relationship with parents is uh, uh, the key to success. And um, also I see some the recommendation of some extracurricular activities in which parents and children, students and teachers could maybe interact and participate all together. Yeah, that's... Um, it was I think a comment, very, it wasn't a question. It, it was a comment, but I think it's a very important comment. Eh? We need to make sure that we don't divide the context of school and home, that we divide it very... Uh, eh, that there is a, um, a distance. Eh? But it's a challenge. How do you do that when parents have to work eh? um, and, and they cannot come to school from... Um, in Belgium, it is... 8.30 till 3, uh, for example. So um, I, I think we need to search how can we do that. Eh? And for example, I saw it in the chat um, that a person said, um, I create lessons eh, together with parents. I think one of the things I saw what was very uh, interesting is if you invite parents at home, uh, at school, and it can be in, in the hours that it's possible for them, that they also can experience what is it to be a student here. Eh? Um, it was a, a, a school where they worked very independently and they didn't give any scores anymore, but they give stars. You have one star or four stars. And the parents were very worried about it. What does it mean? Will my child uh, get a good qualitative education? So um, therefore, in working together with the parents, they notice what experience their children have and that it was very qualitative uh, education. So I think it's very important that we bridge those two worlds, but that we also know that we need to adapt what is possible for parents. Indeed. Thank you very much for all the fruitful information and all the comments. And uh, thank you everyone for participating. I think we have reached the end of this webinar. I have shared with you a short survey. It would be really helpful for us to have your feedback. You can find uh, the link to the survey to the survey uh, on the chat. Uh, Inge, thank you again uh, for uh, presenting this webinar with us. And uh, everyone, thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Mm -hmm. Have a nice day. And we hope to see you soon again in another webinar. Yeah, thank have you. Have a nice day. <laughs>